Set off by these stories of Catholic abuse, can't think in my feelings and unable to get used to the multiple traumas experienced by my great-grandma, abuelita, and then mama. Mama's body used, abused, sexualized before she was five. Orphaned so no one was ever there, would notice or even seem to care. Her tiny mixed-race body called all kinds of N-words and F-U, slut, B. You see, she was born unworthy to a mama raped by Catholic clergy. Already probably had uncles buried under floorboards because grandma was Irish Roma trash, not even worth a family to ask. Mi abuelita abused at 15, sent to a Mary clan by nuns who thought they were doing her a favor, you see, by sending a child across the sea alone thousands of miles. Abuelita had mama, after being on the run from colonizer abusive husband, got with broken lounge singer Mi abuelo Roberto, had my mama in sin, tried to kill my mama because she was Catholic, and that wasn't something she could live with in. She tried to smother her, starving her, basically anything. My mama remade herself because she decided whiteness was rightness, and that's the answer for life. Had me, and then I was held up as a sex toy at three by colonizer white dad, purpose traded on because he knew he could yeah today's podcast from a poverty scholar is dedicated to all the peoples perpetrated seen as too poor too young too weak too brown too black or too red today's podcast from a poverty scholar is also speaking about survival violence and the way so many of us are trained or groomed, as I heard these young people say, early to perpetrate and expect to be used and abused in exchange for love, food, housing, work, safety, bloodstained dollars, even though it's never safe. And to the silent and not-so-silent ways we suffer, and are never okay. The ways our trauma sticks with us like glue on a shoe, but nobody understands or bothers to ask who. To the seen and unseen women, children, men's and trans bodies that stay, even if we might be able to escape, or who can't leave because we don't even know. Just to Insert that I have no answer for this space. That my body is traumatized and still fear for those days. That I have no answer for these acts of complicitness in our own fate. For the ways our fear guides our every moment. For the ways we think eventually we need that space. For the ways we can't even see outside. This is a love letter to all of you, my fellow perpetrated on, to the thousands and millions of children who, like my mama and grandma, and like so many of the fierce folks speaking up about the abuse of these priests and the countless indigenous black, brown, and poor relatives and ancestors who can't speak anymore, who died at the hands of that lie of power, and who has it? of that fake morality, of that fake use of the African revolutionary name as Jesus. This is just a love letter to us all that if we ever make it out still alive, that if we ever move beyond that pain, that if we don't end up As Mama D used to say, with one little murder of the soul, too many. That if we don't end up so broken, 
like so many of my fellow unhoused brothers and sisters who can't get out of the trauma that continues to roll through our heads, that if we maybe get through the eye of that trauma needle, we can live and walk. And even though we never forget, and even though the pain sticks with us in places that we like to not touch, we can sometimes even thrive. We can live, we can speak, and we can be alive. To my mama, I miss you. To all your sisters and brethren, I miss you too. To my Taino ancestors, whose lives and hands and bodies were cut, I hold you in my heart to this day in love. Ibaye. Omateo. That's it for today. Troublesome